I'm super method. I have to like, you know, get a little match on my feet. And just like, yes, <laughs> that's, all. that's not true. <laughs> I only come up with terrible answers initially and then we'll think about it. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going to the Tokyo Empire with six guests from the English-language cast of Fire Force. So without further ado, let's light this up. Our first guest is an actor and director whose credits include Fairy Tale, My Hero Academia, and Ruby. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Hinoa. Please welcome back Christopher Wakeham. Hey, what's up, Patty? How you doing? I am good, boss. How you been? I'm doing great. Just uh, very cold up here in the frozen north, and uh, but otherwise having a great time. Oh, absolutely. So glad to have you back. Uh, glad everything is good, good in your uh, distant corner of the world. <laughs> I'm still in Texas. I lied. Uh, okay. This all is right. just a okay, green fine. screen backdrop. It's all it's the magic of uh, of filmmaking. Ah, you fool me. I ah, crazy guy. Chris, absolutely glad to have you back. And uh, I'm still looking forward to uh, maybe we can get a uh, Yamato event going on. Because you know, Hey, it's, it's anytime you're to ready. My heart. Let's absolutely go, Patty. My let's heart. do it. Yes. We will do it. But in the meantime, we're here to talk about the awesomeness of Fire Force. And let's bring out the rest of this amazing cast. Our next guest, she is an actress and singer whose credits include One Piece, Dr. Stone, and The Last Crusade, or The Rise of a New World. That's some mouthful for a title. Today, she she joins us to discuss the role of unit leader Maki. Please welcome back Sarah Roach. Hello, hello. How you doing? I am good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Oh, I, I, I've got to ask, what is that image you got behind you? Because it looks very 70s roller book. Well, it you got is Lord of the Rings. Exactly what you think it is, yeah. You got Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but then you got the uh, 70s uh, uh, roller uh, action going on. Yeah, we got Farrah Fawcett, 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 Fawcett over there. We have uh, Steely Dan up there. And then just a whole other wall of, of 70s posters you, and stuff. That's a, that's a potpourri of very good taste from the 70s, thank I you. will just say. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and thank you for joining us here today, Sarah. Everything is good in your corner of the world? Yeah, everything's great. Uh, outstanding. So glad to have you here. And next, he is an actor whose credits include Tokyo Ghoul, My Hero Academia, and Black Clover. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Benny Maru. Please welcome Aaron Roberts. Hello, everyone. Hey, Patty. Are you in uh, Are you in Florida right now? Yes. Uh, normally, awesome. out of Orlando to this weekend, I am in Fort Lauderdale at our corporate office. Oh, awesome. awesome. Where, but but just a matter of whatever part of Florida I'm in, it's always raining. But uh, the Florida <laughs> Board so of Tourism, you of all people know, the Florida Board of Tourism does not want the outsiders to know that. <laughs> That's right. As as a Floridian expatriate, so Aaron, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing great, man. Uh, I, uh, my son, my newborn son is a month old today. Wow. Um, Congratulations. So make sure he's not too fussy and take some, uh, take some cute, uh, pictures for the gram. Hey, hey, well, absolutely. Well, you know, if you need to take a, a daddy break or do something like that, you know, it's okay. Now putting this all on my wife's shoulders and I'm not oh. just talking about tonight. It's the whole process until he sucks <laughs> and then he becomes a ward of the state. <laughs> it's a good plan. There, there you go. There you go. You know, it's a, you know, I'm a bachelor, but you're changing my mind on parenthood if it's that easy. We'll talk. <laughs> uh, glad to have you back, Aaron. Uh, and next, she is an actress whose roles include Dragon Ball Super, My Hero Academia, and Plunderer. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Sister Iris. Please welcome back Alexis Tipton. Hi. Hey. <laughs> How's it How going? are you? I am good, Alexis. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm awesome. Happy to be here. Oh, so glad to have you back. And everything is good in your part of the world? Yeah. Um, I just got back from Liverpool this week. It was the first time I traveled internationally uh, since 2019. So that was wow. a trip. Um, yeah, I had a blast. It was great. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, so glad. So glad. Again, it's nice that things are getting back to almost yeah. the way it was. Yeah. And we're getting there. We're absolutely mm -hmm. getting there. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, congratulations on international travel. Thank you. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and next, she is an actress, script writer, and director whose body work includes Ruby, My Hero Academia, and Street Fighter. Dropkick. Today, she joins us to discuss the role of Haumea. Please welcome back, Caitlin Glass. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hey, how are you? I'm great. I am at this is a little bit of. Uh, convention inception right now. I'm currently at Colossal Con Texas in Round Rock uh, in between programming for them. 
coming to you guys. So I, 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 I thank you. Like I said, uh, we were you know glad you could work on into it and, and, and th thank them for us for giving you this opportunity to do this. We've had a guest previously who talked to us while he was at his table. So that was a it, <laughs> do what you gotta do, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It was just like, hold on, uh, do we want to make this out too? All right, here you go. So, what's the question? <laughs> uh, Jake Busey. So, you know, that, that kind of makes sense. Got it. <laughs> I got it. And finally, he's an actor and cinematographer whose roles include Black Clover, Fairy Tale, and My Hero Academia. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of Shira. Please welcome Derek Snow. Hey, Woohoo! Hey. I'm happy to be here in my little little wacky room. I'm I'm in Florida. No, I'm not. I'm in Texas. <laughs> I just wanted to come up with something sassy. Yeah, oh, Thank you, Patty. Watch out. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just using the power of imagination. Oh, indeed, indeed, indeed. So, so that's your uh, that's your uh, recording and fun room. It is. This is where I, my little accordion and my little weird other accoutrement and my, uh, you know, it's where I go to scream and stuff. Okay. All right. <laughs> my I, personal I, therapy box. I, I am not going to ask you to, if you do, but do you play the accordion? <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> According to me. I am not going to hold you to a musical performance. Yeah. But yeah, if you yeah I love it. I have, I have a couple views. of accordions. Eh? I have too many. I feel like we're going to have five minutes at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet that yeah. That mm -hmm. Patty is apparently too nice to ask you to play, but I will. <laughs> <can't believe> <laughs> I, I, you know, yeah. Lots, we'll have a jam session people, sometime. Lots of people have guitars in the background. <laughs> yeah, they're they just out of play. You know, <laughs> no, <laughs> everybody thought, no, I... yeah, yeah, the chicks are impressed by the accordions. You know? <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> maybe at like the occasional like crazy weird al concert or something but not today yeah, I, exactly can you can you uh can you can you, can you rip some of his, uh, his weird al tunes um i like to i prefer to play much more um hoity-toity uh, french musette music but it always turns into weird al doesn't it uh, <laughs> all roads yeah. lead to weird al yankovic <laughs> <laughs> well, friends, once again, thank you all for joining us here on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team's going through the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for you. In the meantime, I'll just throw this out. What do each of you enjoy about Fire Force, and what have you come to enjoy about uh, giving voice to these great characters? Hmm. Well, you know, you know, initially, just being able to play uh, a character that's got, you know, uh, even though he's smiling, people you know, in his universe, in, outside of Company 8, you know, they, they find him suspicious or, like, a devilish. I, I appreciated um, being able to, you know, find ways to be, to, to to become a hero in, you know, in those little respects while I was in the recording booth. But I, I find, like, in the tail end, you know, going out to conventions and just hanging out with people, I have had some just beautiful interactions with people, uh, you know, how, how they found their own personal inspiration. And that's easily the most fun I've had out, out, you know, out in the world. Just uh, having a good time talking with, you know, Fire Force fans. There was this, I mean, I have so many great stories, but just, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was out in Atlanta and, and uh, this, uh, the sister of her brother, she was just telling me about, he had on this Fire Force shirt. He wore a Fire Force shirt every day. And he was just all up, you know, he loved it. He loves it so much. And, and so, you know, I just, I shouted him out and did a nice little video, you know, with him. And it just, it blew his mind. And I, I love, those are my favorite kind of interactions. That's, that kind of makes it worth it for me. Yeah, I hear you. I feel like when actors do, uh, when they do press junkets, when there's nothing good to say about a show, they're always like, wait till you see it on the big screen, because there's nothing <laughs> else good to say about it. Um, that's not true for this show. Uh, but the art, uh, the art design and uh, the sound design is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, but in terms of just Benny Morrow, uh, I identify a lot, a lot with him. Uh, I have a healthy disrespect for authority and I'm pretty antisocial. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it feels good. It feels like a nice comfy pair of shoes. <laughs> right on. <laughs> that works. That works. Who's got another? Oh. I was going to uh, say animation. So I, yeah. you, you stole my idea, <laughs> but I'll add to that saying that, uh, 
I think the first season especially uh, was kind of like it, Fire Force was very under the radar still. And uh, and so it was kind of like this secret thing that a lot of fans were starting to know about. And then with season two, it became a thing where when I was going to do appearances, people were really excited to talk about it. And uh, so I very quickly was like, I need to actually try to learn some things uh, as fast as I can. Um, Cause I knew a lot about my character, but I didn't know a lot about the larger world of it. And when I really started digging in a little bit more on like, I don't know, like the religious parts of it and some of those themes were really fascinating. Uh, I, this is, this is, I think sometimes the mark of a good show where it pulls you in with something uh, that may be a little bit, you, you know, I, I don't want to say shallow, but just like visceral. Right. So in this case, it's the really cool animation pulls you in. And then, Underneath that, when you keep coming back for it, there's actually some really cool story and world building kind of stuff that happens on this show. And that's the stuff that people usually end up wanting to talk about. So we end up talking about stuff that they have questions about. I'm like, I don't know either, but it's super fun to try to figure it out and uh, uh, see what's going on in the world with these characters. I, I Yeah, I have to echo that about being a, somewhat of a sleeper hit because I think people just saw the initial imagery of oh, it's like a, a firefighter anime or something. And then when they, they get in a world and they discover, oh no, this is, it may look like that common trappings, but there's a deep lore and canon going on here. And yeah, uh, I think that's I think that's what's got people hooked into it. Now the word of mouth is definitely carrying it. So And Toonami too. Toonami always helps. That helps too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, well I, I, had, I, I, had, I, had a, I had a Fire Force trick-or-treater. Did you? Oh, nice. that's so cool. No yes. way. Like, oh, you, you have fire, fire? No, I'm fire force. I'm like, oh. oh that's nice. Dare we ask oh. which character? What's that? Uh, it was a pretty basic. I didn't ask what character because it was a pretty basic fireman costume. That is the safest but possible really answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So really, it was just like, oh, he's he's a new recruit. Like, I'm, fire, I'm fire force. I was like, yeah. all right, cool. He is so, the force. They oh, are fine. fire force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I'm actually the manga. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he was all black and white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so very, very true. Very true. So, Sarah, what do you got? I think for me, I was a huge fan of Soul Eater when it was coming out. So just to be part of a property by the same author was really, really cool. Um, as for Maki, she has a lot of different facets to her that are really fun to play. So she can be like super strong and badass at some parts, or sometimes she's feeling more vulnerable or a little bit insecure or things like that. And it's just really fun to get to explore all of those different facets of a single character. Fair. Absolutely. Absolutely. Caitlin, what you got? Hmm. I was, I was yeah. <laughs> Uh, for me, my favorite thing about being in Fire Force is playing a villain. It's very rare that I play them. So I was really True. excited when Kyle Phillips, the ADR director, said, "This I have you in mind for somebody. He kept telling me that from the very beginning, like, because all the announcements were coming out and everybody was in the thing. I'm like, I didn't even get to audition, Kyle. And he's like, because I have a part for you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, I'll take it. And, and she's crazy and so unpredictable. Uh, I love her so much. I think everybody here in the room relishes playing the villains because anything can happen and everything about them is just larger than life. Um, she's a riot and I'm always excited when I have a Haumea session because I never know what to expect. Yep, yep, there you go. And Lexus, bring us home. Oh gosh, well, I agree with everything that everyone has already said, but um, it's also really nice when we get to work on a show that has like multiple seasons, because <laughs> we can actually like go on a journey with a character and totally. have time yeah. to explore. And I think someone mentioned it earlier, like kind of flesh out the world and the relationships and there's more time to do that. And of course, it's always cool when we get to be a part of a show that's on Toonami. Um, we're all getting pop figures, which is super fun. That's always cool. Um, well, so well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for Sister Iris is concerned, though. What? I, oh, 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 oh my gosh. 
<laughs> that is really cool. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, where Sister Iris specifically is concerned, though, I, I love that they they could have just had her be like, oh, she's the kind of support character that's sweet and has like no dimension or no levels. But she they didn't do that with her. Like she is very sweet and she's kind of in and out and she is kind of on the support team, you know, for lack of a better term. But um, she has these surprising moments where she can be very tough or almost very childlike or, you know, like there's the episode where she just, I don't know, regresses into a five-year-old and starts pushing all these buttons and like getting herself in trouble or she beats a guy with a crowbar, like yeah. <laughs> just random stuff. So um, just when I think she's just going to kind of be a one note, she does something like that. And so it's always, I don't know, it's fun to see what random stuff she's going to do. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's, she's not the nurse joy of this no. universe. <laughs> <laughs> no. And it's like, just when you start to maybe put her in that box, she breaks out of it, which is really exactly. fun. Exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you all for indulging my capricious curiosity. We're good to go on our audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll Ooh. our first one. And this comes from Rosalind, who wants to know, hmm, I'll, I'll adjust this a little bit. What would you consider to be your first acting role that as a, in some professional capacity? So oh, we don't need to go. Oh, yeah, that was so maxing just... where the wild things are when I was in the kindergarten. <laughs> well, if you, if you want to go there, that's fine. You know, do you want to do in, acting in general or just voice uh, acting? I'll say acting in general. It's uh, okay. you, you from your own prism. What do you think? You think you were fairly? Oh wow, I'm a real. I'm an actor. I'm an actress when I'm doing this. So, uh, I felt like I made it as an actor my uh, senior year of high school when I took Tartuffe uh, to uh, UIL state finals. Oh yeah, and lost. Um, but I got, but I got to be Tartuffe, and I got to compete. It's a very funny thing to compete in a play competition. But uh, was it a one act or full? Yeah, one act play competition. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, but I remember being like 17 years old and just being like, "Well, basically, I've done everything. I mean, this is <laughs> this is it. So pretty much the best. So this, I kind of just 17. yeah, this is it, guys. Uh, that that will always stick out in my head uh, for sure. Yeah. I forgot about UIL. That that was probably, I mean, that wasn't a professional gig, but it was, you know, when you're in high school, like that's, and you're it in a competition like, like that, it's your yeah. whole world. And yeah, yeah you I stay. Um, wow. Yeah. Damn. Well, and the competition and like UIL is no joke, like UIL is intense, but yeah, my junior year, I won best actress at UIL, like two levels you in got a row. best actress i Dang. know i still have the trophy and then so that was coveted was like, yeah oh my goodness someone thinks i'm quasi talented that's amazing so yeah <laughs> that was that was before i started doing anything professionally but yeah that was sort of i was in a really competitive theater program in high school mm. so that was also kind of like oh my gosh oh, yay i have something <laughs> to show for all this abuse i've endured <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I won in high school. I won at uh, uh, Florida Thespian Festival. Uh, um, won uh, Best Ensemble uh, Musical Number from uh, The Game from Damn Yankees. Nice. Um, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that's such a, that's a weird common thread. That's why. Yeah. Um, in terms of like achieving uh, <laughs> Texas actor greatness, I was on an episode of Walker this year. Yes. Um, nice. That was pretty cool. Congrats, that's, man. That's it. It's over now. <laughs> now, now I'm just going to walk away from acting. I've done everything just, you can do as an actor in Texas. Um, and Florida. <laughs> and Florida. <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing and I say, and I say this, as I say this, as somebody who with troop, troop 704 went to state as well and lost. But that's yeah. oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's good to make it to state, though. That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. Those who can act, act to those who can't uh, host actors on virtual Q and A. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's got a, who's got another one? They want to. Uh, like mine, they... mine is pretty similar. I did a lot of high school theater. Um, my senior year, I got to play Velma Kelly in Chicago, and oh. I won Best Actress in a High School Musical for Texas, and got to go Heck to New yeah. York. And I was like, I'm an actor now. Um, but yeah, that was that was I think my the first time where I was like, okay, I feel like this is paying off and maybe going somewhere, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue with this. Right on. Cool. Mm. 
Dang. Boy, my my high school was so small. We didn't do plays. So I did. I, I graduated in Oklahoma. So I did. I did speech tournaments, and that was my way of getting out and oh. like, ooh, I can do stuff. I I yeah, I think I I I got second. For I can't even remember. I took four things to state that year because I had nothing better to do. It was humorous <laughs> humorous interpretation. So I was right. yeah, nice. just acting off of myself because that's how small my school was. That's just like a big <laughs> monologue, right? You just get up there and do like a big monologue. Well, like, it's, a it's a duet. It's a duet with yourself. Okay. Yeah, or multiple characters. It was it was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's I kind don't... of like an, an audio book, but it's not just yeah. audio. You actually get to see the speaker and yeah. they can read like fictional pieces. I did speech also in, in high school. Great. And I feel like the first thing I was like, man, I got this. I was living in LA, I was doing like background stuff and then I, I, I booked a part on Scrubs and I thought, this is it. And then I got the authentic LA experience. I was, I was cut out of the show. Oh, <laughs> and that's how I knew this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then like 10 years went by and then I did like musical theater and I was like, oh, and then I could do this. Then I did, yeah, like Peter Pan with uh, Kathy Rigby and, and oh, all kinds of musical theater so cool. stuff. And then one couple of more stumbles led me here to beautiful Texas. And I love it. Now I now I just scream in a, in a box. <laughs> As do we all. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, Miss Glass, bring us home. Oh, my gosh. I don't know if there's one that made me go, no, I'm an actor, but... Uh... I started working at Funimation when I was still in college and I came to the studio on a tour and on the tour, Eric Vale had me get into the booth and say some lines. And I thought getting into the booth was just like part of the tour. Like, Hey, we'll let you see a booth and put on the headphones and hear the thing. And after the beeps, you're going to say this line. And like, this is what voice actors do. Um, but when I came out, he's like, great, your voice is great. Give your information to our talent coordinator and you can work here. And I was oh, like, what? <laughs> it didn't seem right. I kept trying to give him my headshot and my resume because I had those because I'm a prepared actor. And he's like, we don't want that. We just need your phone number. <laughs> okay. And like four days later, uh, I was there recording in the first episode of Case Club. Case Club? Like, Listen to because I was a, a anime dub fan. This was in 2004. So that to me was kind of something that felt like, oh, maybe maybe I'm on to something here. And I knew that being an actor was what I wanted to do. That's what I was in school for. I was just a semester away from a degree in theater. Um, but it was cool to just have this opportunity land in my lap. Uh, mm -hmm. And it because it did, and I because of everything that I've learned and all the preparation that came before, I felt like, oh, I'm I'm doing the thing. The, the thing that I went to school for, it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's wonderful. Now I'm thinking, yeah, I would have to take it out of this too. Oh yeah, they pick somebody out, they throw in the booth. Now, now put on the cans. Now, who knows what I'm talking about? Yes, the <laughs> headphones. That's <laughs> what we talk about. Yeah, I can see that whole protracted thing happening. So, well, there you go, Rosalind. Thank, great question to start us off with. What do we have next? From Dark Respite, do you have any tactics you use to get into your character when recording? I'm super method. I have to like, you know, get a little match on my feet. And just like, <laughs> that's, all. that's all. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I only come up with terrible answers initially, and then we'll think about it. <laughs> Uh, I give myself a hot foot. Yeah, I think initially, whenever I come up with a, like a, a, if there's some kind of a, you know, a, a slight character voice, initially, sometimes what I do is uh, I have a, like a little memo recorder and I record these uh, uh, these these lines that you know just a, a, the tiniest little snippet or something of of a just something that just kind of snaps me into that character. And and if it's been a while, it it, it didn't really happen too much with like Sheen Rick because that was just you know I was. <laughs> all in all of a sudden and yeah it was pretty easy to hop but there are some roles you know you, you get away from and you know you're about to do a recording while you're warming up and they will play you know sometimes if you're lucky you know clips of your your voice before but you know just in case i i go over those little yeah my, my little my little sayings with my little recorder that i listen to later on it's my trick 
I just one. do like vocal warm ups. I just, I mean, that doesn't really have anything to do with getting into character. I just try to <clears throat> treat my voice with kindness. <laughs> Or, uh, and Sister Iris is a little higher, so I try to just do vocal warm-ups, and she's, like, higher and breathier, and so I try not to, like, consume things before a session for her that is going to make my voice gross, <laughs> like dairy or, you know, caffeine Delicious or whatever. cheese. Mm. I know. <laughs> All the good stuff. The bane uh, of voice acting. Exactly. Right. I can drink coffee right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they say they say you're not supposed to have caffeine before you watch it, but I don't know who really follows that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and in terms of character, I just kind of wait for the director to tell me what we're doing, and uh, and that's like another good thing about working on a character that you get to live with for a few seasons, because then it becomes easier and easier to just like fall back into that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I also warm up because I'd like to do this for a while. <laughs> um, check my voice. Um, but in terms of uh, finding voice and setting character voice, um, I, I work very similar similarly on stage as I do in the booth where um, I figure out where, I mean, based on a given circumstances, you know, and the size of the character and all that stuff, um, figure out where the, the breath lives in that character. Um, and then we'll posture and, and manipulate my body <laughs> into a way that uh, is going to channel that that voice. Roughly, mm -hmm. so. yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think the nature of what we do in dubbing is very organic, sporadic, spur of the moment, whatever you want to say. So sometimes I don't like preparing. It's good to prepare your voice to do the work, but um, like Derek mentioned, they'll play a reference for you. And sometimes just watching the Japanese can be enough. You're like, oh, this is the character, but. Um, <laughs> Similar to Aaron's answer, I will also find a posture for my body to stand in that I associate uh, with the character. Um, and sometimes I don't decide it, like when I first have a new role, but I will take note of what my body does by like the end of that session and be like, oh, my arms have been crossed this entire time. This must be this character for me physically. Yeah. So sometimes just doing that will put me in the place to be whoever I'm being that day. Mm -hmm. I'll bet it'd be fun to watch everybody in the booth because I know nice. just thinking about you, Aaron, you know, you're picking poses. I'm I'm like a Muppet in the booth. You know, I, I'm <laughs> flopping around sometimes when I'm finding a particular character choice. I remember uh, Kyle once he he he. He saw me doing like this little thing while I was trying to come up with a, like a voice. He's like, I need more of that. Flop your head around more when we're doing it. Because, you know, he's weird. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're just a bunch of. Uh, yeah, exactly. What? Oh, perfect. <laughs> By a voice. <laughs> I think we should all do it. Let's everybody do it. Oh, I feel like I have to start talking like this when we're doing it. <laughs> I'm just going to go back to cheese again. Um, I, cause I love it so much and it's a real problem. It's a real problem guys. Uh, so it's, uh, our house is full of green apples all the time. Uh, and, uh, I eat probably five minimum of five green apples a week. Um, cause I eat the rest of the time so much cheese and, uh, it's just required because the, so the power of the green apple for those that don't know, it just really cuts any kind of flemmy nastiness in the thro throatal area. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's yeah. a very scientific term. Don't look it up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my uh, that's one of my traditions, I suppose, is just lots of green apples. Apples make my throat swell up. Well, no. that's, well maybe. And that's not for you. <laughs> right, no. Unless you have a character that's got a swollen throat, I guess. And that then interesting. is it apples and then at an all? EpiPen. It's, yeah, it's uh it's starchy fruits it's pears mm -hmm. it's like if they're not it's yeah i don't know why and but i'm not alone but this happens this has happened to other people yeah, there's yeah. Acid stuff. I, get it. I have but a friend yeah, who's I... allergic to the skins apple skin you can eat the yeah. fruit part but not the skin so i was just curious like try it without the skin yeah, yeah. 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 It's right at the, the doctor's office with the skin. <laughs> try it right now on the live stream let's let's try it right now yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get viral <laughs> 
Uh, one of the things that I like to do, I think I'm the only one who hasn't gone, um, is associate like a specific song or like a genre of music oh, cool. with characters. So oh, I had boy. to do like a Scottish character recently. Now it's just like warming up, listening to bagpipes beforehand. It helped. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll typically like associate either a specific song or just like a genre that just kind of gets me in the mood for, you know, whatever that character is like. That's cool. Yeah. Sweet. And let's roll another one. This comes from Mariah. In Fire Force, what character would you say has the best fighting power or move? Hmm. I think Hibana is really cool with her like flame flower power. <laughs> I don't know. She's crazy. I love it. <laughs> uh, hands down, the goat, Binimaru. He's second and third generation. <laughs> he can create, he can control. Goody. He's all things to all people. I, you know, it is the sexiest move. <laughs> I'm afraid if I don't also answer Benny Maru, Aaron might be mad at me. So that's my answer, too. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. I'm going to say, I'm going to draw a comparison here with My Hero Academia, where I feel like Froppy is a very underrated character sometimes in terms of her abilities, because she has the abilities of a frog. But those abilities are pretty OP when she actually uses them. I'm going to say Tamaki is a little bit underrated with Fire Force. She has all the powers of a fire cat. I don't I don't know, but uh but she also is like extremely fast and powerful. So I'm going to say perhaps underrated Tamaki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would also say I like I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of uh, just most of Maki's moves. They're just so badass. Yeah. And uh, I like the little flame friends. They're my favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I would say too. Because she can make little friends, and that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> we all need friends these days. You can actually just make go. them. Yeah. <laughs> it's so friend. much easier. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. There you go. Thank you, Mariah. Great question. And here's one from Sam. Uh other than Fire Force, do you have a favorite anime? And I'm going to broaden that out being, okay, you don't have to pick an all-time favorite. Just maybe something you've been enjoying, uh, discovered recently and enjoying right now. Or something harkening back to the classic. I think, you? yeah, the anime that, that changed me to realize how incredible anime could be was uh, going back to Princess Mononoke. That's, oh. I just loved that one growing up. Um, you know, the first time I saw it, it, it just changed me. I, I thought, wow. Animated cartoons, because that's, you know, kind of where I was coming from at that point before I really, you know, saw that kind of thing. I was like, wow, this is incredible. It just, it just opened a new wrinkle in my brain. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure. I just love Food Wars. It's just fun. <laughs> it makes me hungry. <laughs> I'm going to go with a show from the, from the currently airing season that uh, is right up my alley. Cause I love like black mirror and twilight zone and, and stuff like that uh, called sunny boy, oh. which is just <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, um, yeah, excellent taste. I, I do. Don't I? <laughs> you're in your good. Dog <laughs> I may be a little biased here, but, and, and yet I also will say uh, even, even despite the fact that I'm in it, uh, and that we have the director and the one of, I guess, the lead here with us as well. Um, I just think it's a fascinating show. And I think it's going to be one of these that, I don't know, four or five years go by and people are like, this show is just, mm -hmm. I think it's a little ahead of itself right now in some yeah, it's ways. Special. It's, a, um, it's, yeah. it's just really interesting. Um, yeah. I would probably just say Soul Eater. Um, I was not uh, I was not exposed. I was not allowed to watch anime as a child. Um, I don't know if it was the witchcraft, or the large eyes. I don't know. I grew up in a very religious household. Um, so when I got the opportunity to work at Funimation, uh, I went and watched um, so a couple selections to figure out what on earth I was doing. Um, and uh, High School of the Dead was one of those shows. Fairy Tale was one of those shows. And I was like, oh, that's Todd Haberkorn. We went to college together. That's amazing. Uh, I didn't know he was in this, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, but then I landed on Soul Eater and uh, mm -hmm. I just, I loved uh, the depth of like, there was, it's just a, the art, the design, character design is amazing, um, but the, the darkness of it all was um, very attractive to me. And also has Todd Habercorn, so. <laughs> That's all, double dose, <laughs> double dipping. <laughs> Two Todds. 
Uh, I won't. Okay, so you said not your favorite of all time. A moment ago. Well, if you have one, you can. It's just. Uh, it's really hard to choose. But a moment mm, ago, yeah. Derek, you opened your door and I saw a poster on the back of your door. <laughs> Yes. Hey. I just want I got to this. I got this day before yesterday at five <gasps> below. Isn't that fun? No kidding. Right? Yeah, wow. I love watch, I love finding I'm cheap. I'm two things. I'm a cheap person. <laughs> <laughs> so I love a good deal. And and I also like I'm always, you know, perusing for a little stuff that might have my voice. But then I saw I saw this yesterday and I was like, holy yeah. cow, this is incredible. And I was gonna I was gonna message you, but you know. <laughs> Um, so that's, I'm Derek, Derek is on that poster. He plays Mr. Boobry, this little green guy. Oh, and, oh, <laughs> that's the voice too. And I'm Nelly, the redhead above him. So I'm in the show, but I also directed it. And um, it is in my top five shows that I have directed. And um, the manga is also fantastic. And it, 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 it appeals to folks that like shonen anime, like, you know, the strong young male protagonist going on a journey and how his life will change. But it has some extremely deep things for him to deal with. Uh, get, little, like, this, get this little French little mm. something extra from little, Tony Valente. little something yeah. extra, yeah. Tony, Tony Valente, the author of the original manga, he, he's French. And um, it's just really neat. It deals with a lot of... Uh, prejudice and racial tension and uh, all kinds of things, but it's got cool magic and fun moves and amazing character designs. So I highly recommend it to anybody, please. Mm -hmm. and, and it's extremely international feeling. It's a fantasy world, but um, sometimes our lives in America, depending on where we live, can be extremely homogenous. But if you've lived in Europe for any extensive time, you'll realize it's, it's a lot more crazy over there there's all kinds of things and people to meet and it, you really experience that um in this story mm -hmm. and um it's so cool the things that i got to dig into while working on it in different languages and pronunciations of names because because the author will be like mm, these characters names are going to be based on uh, celtic figures and these on welsh figures and then the next season they don't deal with that at all it's completely other people um it's just really rad and everybody should watch radiant is that on Funimation now, or do I have to buy a DVD? Um, it's on Funimation. You can check okay. it out, or Crunchyroll, or both. I mean, one of those two places has it. I think the dub lives in one place, and maybe the sub elsewhere. I don't remember. But, um, yeah, it's two seasons long. It's 50-something episodes, and then the manga goes further. So get get on it, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> There you oh, go. Man, one of my favorite classic animes from that I watched before I was a voice actor uh, was Rurouni Kenshin. I was a really big Rurouni Kenshin fan. And so when we yeah. got like the live action films yeah. a couple years ago, I was like so excited. <laughs> um, and then in terms of something more um, present day, like, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying directing Sunny Boy. And that show has just been like mind blowing. I, I tell people it's like if David Lynch got together with a sci fi writer <laughs> and they decided to make an anime. Um, I'm really into like art house films and like psychological slow burns. And I love <clears throat> film that makes me think. And I love film that makes me want to go have a conversation with somebody after I see it. And I feel like that's like Sunny Boy is that in anime form. So it's just something, it's just really different. I've never encountered like, a show like that before. I feel like the sound design of Sunny Boy is like the opposite of Fire Force. Fire yes. Force has got these incredible <laughs> yeah. like sound sculptures. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sunny Boy is like, and that's the soundtrack. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, it, it does rock. It's very, like, it's folky. Intent. It too, thinks, but... yeah, it's got all this stuff. It's cool. Yeah, and we're, I, something else that I just make kind of makes me be even more passionate about it is um, uh, some of the things we've done to the mix. Uh, Gino is my mixer, and we, we've been treating it like an art house film, like the entire series. Mm -hmm. So he's been doing some really cool stuff, and we've had some discussions about how to make it more art housey. So it do, it is an anime, but it's almost like rotoscoped, and it just, it's like <clears throat> shameless Sunny Boy plug. Sorry, but it's, yeah. just, uh -huh. it's a really cool show, and I've just never <laughs> seen an anime like that before or since. So yeah, all right, all right, it's deep man. Getting a lot of stuff on my list here. <laughs> I think one of my favorite shows that came out a little while ago is Death Note. I was in mm. middle school when that came out, and I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. Um, and that like, I, I've been watching anime a little bit before that, but that was when I was like, okay, this is going to be my life now. Um, <laughs> I think one of the more recent shows that has come out that I really love is Mob Psycho. Mm -hmm. um, like the visuals and the characters and everything are just stunning and it's so, so cool. Um, yeah, 
I'm going to limit it to those two or else I'll talk forever. <laughs> <Nah. laughs> there you go. Great question. I think we have time for one more. See if we can go on at a quick, fun one. And this is going to come from Alex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> People have spoken. Yay. Oh, my goodness. He's actually going to do it. All right. Great. Great. <laughs> so, this is a. He, I have he's my. putting on his big, hands. My big accordion over there. So right. that is about 50 pounds more of accordion. So this is a student accordion. So it's uh, <laughs> it's a little out of tune. It's precious. <laughs> Let me, first of all, I always like to start off with my favorite song. <laughs> I don't think these straps are properly attuned to my body. <laughs> Here, I got to back up. I'm not, I'm not prepared for this. I feel like I'm put. I, I know how people who put on bras feel. All right, here we go. All right, this is. Hold on. Musical bra. <laughs> yeah, a musical bra. Hold on. Mama's got a squeeze box she wears on her chest. This song is called. Oh, I forgot. It's called Hold On. <laughs> Hold on. This has got like adder to go with it. This is Hold on. <laughs> Ugh, I can't reach the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is flat. <laughs> oh. That's it. <laughs> Well, there's some really it? flat keys on there. What Ooh. was it? I feel like you need like little Tyrannosaurus arms to play that thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is uh, well, it's, it's better without a jacket on. Oh, I'm sure. What's that? How do you tune an accordion? You you um very not, carefully. You don't you don't do jack squat with this cruddy <laughs> student one with my real one. There's wax like you you can open it up and and you can oh. remelt stuff. It's all kinds of. It's incredible. It's a piece huh. of art. But this thing is a piece wow. of junk. <laughs> hey, I got the bras on. Here we go. <laughs> uh, are we really gonna break this feed with this this junk? <laughs> oh, for some reason one of the keys isn't playing. <laughs> Did I just see Power Rangers? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Mm, excellent, excellent. Uh, anyway, hi guys. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Bravo. So, I, was, I was beginning to have some serious doubts about whether or not you could play the accordion, and I thought the gag was like, uh, "Here's a song I'm gonna play for you. It's called Hold On." <laughs> Did you like it? Did you get it eventually? Because I said it. It's a dad joke. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, another round of applause for Derek. Hey. Uh, I'm sure somebody's so going to re-upload that one to YouTube. Uh, right. <laughs> Panelists, as always, it's been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we take our leave? <clears throat> yeah, I'll play actual accordion songs for those who I do one-on-ones with. <laughs> wow. Um, if that's not salesmanship, I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's my pleasure to be here just hanging out with you guys. This is great. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Once again, it's been my absolute pleasure to host you. Thanks for joining us once again on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us, and thank you all for your great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care, and remember, smiles are free. Spend them often. <laughs>